leads us as we move through to Saturday. What did you make of Noah's ability to come in in the fourth quarter and, and operate? There wasn't a, a lot going on <laughs> yeah. overall the first three drives, but he got you in position to... To come in and be able to do his job, yeah. in other words, yeah. I, yeah, he, you know, he's been, he's practiced really well all, all through camp. Um, since the beginning of the season, keeps himself really well prepared. So I figured it would, it, it would look something like that, you know, and... It was fortunate for us that our defense played as well as they did, Coach Chins and the guys. And, um, you know, we were able to get a win. It was awesome. Take us through that, the conversation. Frost said that you guys were talking about whether it would be Luke and that you brought it up on the headset like a play before. Oh, man, that was wild now because uh, me and Bunchy were talking and, and he had asked the question. And so I got on the phone to, to Coach Frost on the headset and said, Frosty, what, what do you want to do? So he let me know. So that happened. And then I, the, the play is going on with no one. My eyeballs are somewhere else, not on him. And the next thing I know, he's he's jogging off the field. And we just talked. So that was, yeah, that was, I must have breathed it in existence or something like that. But it was a bit surprising. But, yeah, to all of a sudden see Luke out there. And how do you feel about where Luke is, and, you know, about possibly playing some more going forward. Well, if that were to happen, I feel really comfortable with him. I, I, I am almost certain Coach Frost and the rest of the staff and the players that are around just because of his performance in practice. Now, if that were to occur, then the only thing is going to be a matter of game reps and that sort of experience and seeing things and all that sort of stuff, you know. But he's, he's practiced really well. He does, a, he does a nice job every time he's in there. How much does it help? I know you, on game days you tell all your guys we're all in this together. Absolutely, man. It's we are. It's all, it's all thing. How does that help in situations like Saturday where everybody does actually you have to have three guys go on the field? In that game? Well, yeah, you know, from an emotional standpoint and just a preparedness standpoint, we're all in it together. And, you know, we make certain uh, from week to week that all the guys are prepared in the same way and taking game tests and all that sort of stuff. So feel comfortable about with uh, with what they know about the game plan, whether they're number one, two, or three on the depth chart. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yeah. Did, it, did you need any confirmation or disconfirmation help to watch? I mean, I know Noah's played a little bit, and he played some at UCF, but at least that I know of not in a situation like that in the fourth quarter of a game that was on the line. So does it does it help at all, or do you learn anything about him when you watch him in that well, situation? J- just from being around him as much as I have, he's always been really calm and collected, you know, and when he's had the opportunity to get – X amount of reps in terms of preparing for the game. He's usually been pretty sharp. Now I know the the game he went into uh, last year was such a weird year for him, you know, it was, but it was what it was. But uh, always pretty comfortable with him, you know, and I, I, I wouldn't say I was necessarily surprised, but it was certainly good to see, you know. When he uh, when he threw the ball out of bounds after the fumble and he picked it up and threw it out of bounds, I mean that I know it's not a play that you want to see happen, but <laughs> no, that, yeah. that was, was that a pretty good indication no. of where his head was at. That and I think the ball that he threw and just how he handled himself, and then when we were talking on the sidelines, and then the play where Coach Frost wanted to get us back to the middle of the field, and he certainly could have done his job and got us back to the middle of the field but he saw an opening and he took it for a lot more yards than we had expected and that was that was really good and certainly helped our, our kicker out I think. So was he supposed to just move to the middle and yeah, down the ball? Or? Yeah he was supposed to get just as much yardage as he, as he could uh, possibly Yeah. Um, but you know sometimes in that sort of situation a young guy will think well just let me get the ball to the middle of the field but he had the presence of mind to see a a bigger hole and let's go. So, and he got us more yards. When Almost the, scored. When the snaps are inconsistent. What do you tell your guys if it's throwing the rhythm off? You know that first second of a player. I mean, how do you how do you do, deal with that as a QB? We, we, we just uh, I just tell them from from week to week, from game to game, from practice to practice. Don't worry about it. Let's just play. Let's do the best we can, given the situation and whatever happens, um, and let's play. Then. Don't piss and moan about it. Let's just go. Got to do what we got to do.
Yeah. Is, how tough is it? I'm not asking you to give away what's happening, but if, if a guy can't practice the first couple of days, how, how tough is it for him to be part of the plan even if he's experienced like Adrian is? I, that, that's a, a great question. And because a young guy like him has played as much football as he has, as young as he is, you know, um, it's, it doesn't create as much of a factor for you, you know. Um, if it was a young guy who, let's say, hadn't played before, or given the experience level was lower, yeah, you might be a little concerned, you know. But um, I, w- I wouldn't be concerned with that at all in any way, shape, or form. We hear a lot about, you know, Noah's been in this offense longer than anybody else. Yeah. But if you can think back to when you were at Central Florida and as, as he learned the <laughs> offense move, what does he do well and, and, and how did he learn it? How did he get to this point where he's had the most experience? I mean, how, well, how just because of the time and the recruiting, yeah. number one, and the number two, just because of the work we do with the playbook test and all that sort of stuff, just the knowledge base of it. Um, but he has innately pretty good vision. And I remember one of the first games, if it was actually his first game and his first snap uh, in that series, and there was a protection issue that he had to change. And here he is, his first game, and he changed it. He saw it, changed it, and got it done through a, through a strike. So um, he's pretty cool and collected. He knows what he's doing. So um, I feel pretty comfortable with him, and he's going to have to perform at a high level this Saturday if he happens to be playing. Caffrey didn't hesitate to pee. <laughs> uh, does that surprise you? No, if, if you know Luke at all, he's kind of that kind of cat. I think when I talked to him on the phone, he said he was hoping they wished they called a pass play cause so he could have scrambled around for about 80 yards. And, <laughs> but that's that's Luke, you know. So. But it was I, like I said, I looked up and all of a sudden I see Noah coming off and Luke on the field. It was a bit surreal for me. Has he always known this was a redshirt season for him? That's always been the plan? Because that's what Scott said Monday. That yeah. Definitely you want to keep him. Yes, if at all possible, that would be just absolutely ideal. The kid's going to be just an outstanding player. And so, yeah, that'd be great if we could.